details of access control. Um, what is it that we need to protect against? Well, we'll, we'll go through uh, a list here of the types of threats, uh, some of the, the threats that we see in terms of access control. To give sort of an overview, an introduction to the types of things that we need to protect against and the uh, possible ways that we can protect against them, uh, countermeasures that we can take in regard to certain situations. So, starting off with denial of service. Now, immediately you say, you know, what has denial of service to do with access control? Well, availability, right? You know, it's not that we are uh, necessarily protecting uh, against people getting our information, but if they are denying our service, if they have managed to uh, do something that denies us service, what are we going to do about it? Well, uh, having good access control so that we don't get denied access is a part of that. Uh, planning the access control in such a way that somebody can't uh, prevent us from having access to things that we should have access to. Um, and uh, yeah, some technical functions such as if somebody uh, launches a massive distributed denial of service attack um, what do we do in regard to that? Well, you know, firewalls to filter, uh, possibly uh, the services that we can uh, buy from other providers who uh, manage, specifically manage, mass denial of service attacks. So we have, uh, you know, different ways to protect uh, against being prevented from getting access to our own systems. Um, buffer overflows. Now, jumping from the sublime to the ridiculous in some ways, but buffer overflows are uh, a way that uh, traditionally has been used very often to launch attacks against our systems, our applications, uh, to prevent our access control systems from working as intended and getting, uh, you know, preventing buffer overflows, um, which is not that difficult to do. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, ways, the first of which is simply being careful in our programming and uh, taking the time uh, to program, um, to uh, count the characters, to uh, prevent unlimited run-ons in login or password sequences. Um, you know, making sure that we do program carefully to prevent buffer overflow situations so that uh, the, the types of attacks that buffer overflows allow are all protected against. You know, it's, it's a known problem. It has been known forever. And we're still seeing buffer overflow situations. So, you know, take that care. Don't just use canned packages and expect that somebody else has taken care of the problem. If you know specifically that, yes, this library uh, is specifically written to prevent buffer overflows, then sure, fine. But, you know, make sure that you don't just assume somebody's done it. Hopefully they've uh, paid attention. No, you know, if, if they haven't, you need to. Um, mobile code. Um, any time, I mean, any, any form of mobile code, any uh, applets that get downloaded onto your machine, uh, well, um, I mean, one of the, the primary examples here is the X-Terminal program, uh, which conceptually I like, uh, primarily because it, it turns our client-server model on its head, you know, it's the, the big 
mainframe that is the client in this case and it is asking for a service from your microcomputer on your desk uh, so you know an interesting role reversal there in a, in a sense but the um, the thing is that it uh, asks you to provide the interface by running its own code on your server, essentially, your machine. And anytime somebody is running their code on your machine, you've got a potential problem. You've got, uh, you know, a, a, a possible security shortcoming. And so any example of mobile code, anytime that we are looking at a situation where someone else is allowed to run code on your machine, we've got to consider the security implications. Uh, so, mobile code there. And along with this, good old citizen programming. Uh, we've got people who decide that they know how to program well enough that they can, you know, do a quick and dirty uh, little utility to help with them with their job. Well, you know, if it's quick and dirty, they're not thinking about security, right? And any quick and dirty uh, quick fixes, ill-considered quick fixes, um, we've got the possibility of problems in that regard. So we've got to um, try and uh, discourage citizen programming. Uh, we've got to try and uh, encourage more formal uh, processes when it's dealing with our you know, corporate tools, our corporate data, our uh, corporate resources. We need to, um, well, as I say, discourage the, the citizen programming. We need to encourage uh, more careful methods when you are dealing with something of importance to the enterprise. So we need to uh, encourage proper uh, things. And, and of course, you know, one of the things, you know, we're talking about mobile code, we're talking about uh, citizen programming, so we got programming involved here, and that brings up the topic of malware. And of course, malware, all kinds of things. And uh, frequently when I'm teaching uh, uh, seminars on security uh, to the, the general public, uh, one of the questions is, well, what can uh, a program do if it gets onto your phone, if it gets onto your computer? And the answer is anything. So we've got to make sure that we are avoiding any possibility of malware because it can do anything and anything is definitely not what we want to have happen.